four-wheel drive that every little kid draws and you ask them to draw a four-wheel drive car. It's box shape, that's part of the beauty of it. And they, they are driven all around the world and they keep driving forever. Don't ask me how they do that, but they keep driving forever. I think the Defender is one of the few in its class and has the same line and the same design for so many years already. It's a modern classic. We knew that there was a market for Defenders in the US and since they were not driving around there, uh, the market was huge because everybody wanted to drive something different. We started buying and selling them, so buying 25-year-old Defenders, shipping them to the US and sell them there. But the problem with that is that most 25-year-old Defenders are pretty crappy cars, so they almost uh, fall apart when you look at them because nobody ever services a Defender. Since we didn't like that, we uh, started out fully servicing the cars before going there and repairing them so that at least it was a technically decent car. And when you start doing that, one thing leads to another and before you know it, you're restoring the complete car because that's the only way you can stand behind your product 100%. We had clients coming to us, can't you build them with, uh, in a blue color with a, a beige leather interior and those wheels, etc., etc. So we said, yeah, of course we can do that. So we didn't want to touch the looks of the Defender since it's a beautiful car as it is. So that's where we began improving them on, on performance, on handling uh, and comfort. We made modifications to the cars that we thought Land Rover should have done all along but never did. It's fun to say, yeah, we can build anything. But then if you say that, then you have to do it as well. It wasn't like we started off like make a list. No, it was like, okay, we want a lot of horsepower. Okay, go, let's go, let's do it. And then you get an engine, make a couple brackets is easy, but then transmission. It doesn't fit to the transfer case from Land Rover. We have to start working something out. For me, it's like a big puzzle. That's the biggest challenge. Alex and I met each other and um, we were sitting in a bar and we always had the same idea. So Alex told me something that he liked and I was like, yeah, let's do it. And I told him and he's like, yeah, let's do that. And it was crazier and crazier and crazier. And uh, we really uh, complimented each other in, uh, in that part. And of course, where Alex is really the technical genius. And me being the more commercial guy in the company, there was a good combination between the two of us. I always loved cars. I had set up another company where I made uh, mints against garlic smell. Uh, that actually took off pretty well. Made a great, a great deal uh, in the Middle East. But then thinking about what I wanted in the future and see if I wanted to sell those garlic pills for the rest of my life or if I want to do something where my heart was at. And that was with cars. I made a list of all of the ideas I had. Rated them from my heart and rated them from the head. And this was actually an idea that had actually had some potential. It's always been anything mechanical. Really young, got some tools from my grandpa every week. When you get like older, I stopped taking apart like refrigerators and after school hours, I worked at a blacksmith. But I was like, I don't wanna build just metal fences. There's a garage, walked in there. I'm looking for something new. Okay, fine. There's an old Mustang there and really big pile of parts. So like started building up this Mustang. And that's how I like started rebuilding cars from scratch with no knowledge, with no documentary of everything. Well, we want to make a classy version of the G-Wagon, which is better in every way. It has a lot of power, but it's also comfortable and it should go around corners. So that's why we updated the air suspension and the brakes and the different anti-roll bars and the whole drivetrain and creature comforts all the way up to uh, uh, seats that have heat and ventilation in them. I have like 20 years of experience in working with the series and the Defender, so a lot of stuff on the cars to like build the standard car is easy. I started on doing that to have just the basic engine transmission transfer case in the car. And so I started uh, drawing that in CAT. And yeah, so we had that tail piece adapter for the transmission and then it drives and then it's like, yeah, okay, but it will get you somewhere from A to B. Don't ask how fast.
there are more people who put LS3 engines in a Defender, but we do it differently. And they say, well, we use an automatic transmission because that cushions power and the torque a bit for the rest of the drivetrain. We thought that was a crappy argument. If you put an engine like that in the car, the car should be able to uh, cope with all that power and torque. So we redesigned practically the complete drivetrain, all the way from the engine to the wheels. Big engine needs good handling and it's all done in all tiny things like different pivot joints and different bearings instead of the, the bearings that Land Rover uses and everything to make it more smooth and make it want to go straight instead of like in a corner and it stays in the corner. All these kind of small things and it adds up. I think the attention to detail is what sets you apart from the rest. So the, the, the sheer quality and the thoroughness of the builds that, that speak for itself. I mean, every Defender uh, can look good on a photo, but it's only if you see one in real life and you actually take a look at the details, that's where you see what makes it stand out. The Defender itself in the factory is built by hand. They're all different and it's when you measure something out from a certain point, the next car, when you do the same thing, it won't fit. There isn't one exact point in a Defender which is the center point where you can measure out from. So that's, that, that's a, a challenge to get all parts fitted. So every car that we had finished, it looks the same as the other one. It all has the same brackets, but this bracket might be a little longer, this one a little shorter, to get the car aligned so it looks nice. If something's not right, take it apart, do it again. If something's still not right, take it apart, do it again, until you get it right. Everything needs to be perfect or don't do it. You have to finish as strong as you start. It really is a sensation to drive one. Don't forget, it's always going to be Defender and it's like moving a brick through a wall of wind. So at high speeds, over 200 kilometers an hour, you really feel that it's pushing through that wall of wind. But with that big engine in there, it does it perfectly. Then again, where, where a standard Defender tips over when swerving, at 50 kilometers an hour. This one will do with 95 and it will still stay on four wheels. It's fun to have it leaving the shop in the Netherlands, working days and night to get it done in time. Yes, you roll it onto the truck and it's gone. It's like, whoa, it's empty. It's like a puzzle. Put in the last piece. Okay, puzzle done. Next one. No, it's not easy. It's always a risk. You have a lot of not only money on the line, but also people that work here that work very hard for the company. When you see people so happy with their dream car that they've waited a long time to receive, but once they get it, they're like a little kid. I think the fun is, is the most important part that we have with it. We have a vision and we want to build our dream cars and that's what we do.